Hello and welcome. My name is Beatrice Bernardi, and I'm a senior analyst for Jane's Military Platforms. And it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this online intelligence briefing. Today, Jamie Hunter, who is editor of Jane's All the World Aircraft in Service, together with Charles Olozzi, senior analyst for Jane's Military Platforms and Defense Programs, will present a session entitled The Jet Trainer Market, an assessment of the U.S. Air Force TX Combat Aircraft Trainer Competition. The IHS Jane's Intelligence Briefing Program will consist of approximately 40 events during 2017 and is available to all customers of Jane's Intelligence Center and module products, including the market's forecast products. Uh, this webinar comes at an interesting time in the wake of the U.S. Air Force's TX T-38 Trainer Replacement Program's release of the final request and proposals in December 2016 and its aftermath with the recent withdrawal of the Northrop Grumman BAE Systems team from the running and the exit of Raytheon from Leonardo's T-100 project. With the contract award expected later this year, the final contenders will become clear in the coming months. The move in many air arms from third to fourth and fifth generation combat aircraft with their attendant increased sophistication of avionics and sensor capability has driven a corresponding recapitalization of their leading fighter trainer or lift fleets. Consequently, there is a buoyant market for this type of platform with a significant number of modern lift types available with the possibility of others joining them as a result of their development for the massive TX program. In this section, I'm going to outline the general trends in the jet trainer market and then look briefly at a few competitions and opportunities coming up in the next 10 years before examining the TX program in more detail. So, looking at general trends, there is an increasing move towards the downloading of the training syllabus to a lift platform, which is considerably cheaper to operate than frontline combat aircraft. That's to say, a lot of the training done in the oper operational training unit on the frontline type for aspects such as tactics and weapons employment can now be accomplished with the lift aircraft. To gauge the kind of savings involved, an F-16 costs around $22,500 per hour to operate, an F-15C around $42,000, an F-35A $24,000, and an F-22 around $68,000. A T-38C trainer costs about $9,000 per hour to fly. Uh, here we see a range of jet trainer programs coming up in the next decade. When the first aircraft are likely to enter service, and the number of airframes that could potentially be acquired. Following the developments of recent weeks, it would appear that the field has narrowed down probably to three contenders. While it is now unlikely that Textron Airland will enter a bid, and the intentions of Freedom Aircraft Ventures LLC are unclear with the relation to TX, Lockheed Martin and KAI's T-50A, the Boeing SAR entry for TX, and Leonardo's T-100 remain as solid contenders now that the latter has decided to continue bidding with this U.S. subsidiary Leonardo DRS as prime contractor. Um, for my presentation, I'm going to concentrate on the details of the aircraft directly linked to the TX competition. Uh, as I'm sure of you'll be many, of, many of you will be aware, and having just listened to Charles, um, the status of these contenders has been somewhat fluid of recent. However, uh, it certainly makes for an interesting situation when it comes to TX. So going to my first slide, I'm going to start talking about the T-50A. This is a joint offering from Lockheed Martin and Korea Aerospace Industries. Interestingly, in what started out as a competition that looked like favoring existing off-the-shelf solutions, TX has actually morphed into a competition that looked like favoring an all-new clean sheet solution. While Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works looked at the all-new approach, it was in the end decided to stay low risk and offer the T-50A. Boeing has consistently treated TX extremely seriously. As far back as 2010, Boeing said it favoured a clean sheet approach to TX. At the time, it was the only manufacturer talking of a new aircraft for this requirement, and some observers considered this approach as being too costly and full of risk. Boeing maintained its stance, and indeed in 2013, it began receiving some input from Sweden's Saab with which it signed the teaming agreement in December 2013. 
I'm sure most of you have seen and heard from Charles that recent weeks have been somewhat turbulent for Northrop Grumman when it comes to TX. Northrop Grumman has been team with BAE Systems on TX from the start, and initially looked like offering a derivative of the Hawk. Indeed, the Hawk even conducted a US tour in 2011. Then, as the TX requirements became clearer, Northrop Grumman ditched Hawk in favour of this clean sheet approach in February 2015. So, few key takeaway bullet points here. Uh, we discussed the global market trends and opportunities. So, we, we noticed the preference for lift platforms, which reduce operational costs, the use of avionics and display that match those of fourth and fifth generation fighters, and a preference for trainer platforms that undertake secondary roles, such as light strike and fighters. Political and cost considerations led end users towards traditional markets uh, in search for suppliers. And then finally, the U.S. Air Force TX replacement program. So the contract is expected in 2017, and initial operational capability is expected to be reached in 2024. This concludes the seminar. Thank you for joining us today for this event. A copy of the slides with a simultaneous audio recording of this presentation will be made available to all subscribers of our Intelligence Centers, Modules, and Market Forecast products. We look forward to welcoming you to future online briefings. Our next online briefing, which is on Fortress Crimea, Military and Politics in Crimea, three years on, and being held on Thursday, 2nd of March. Thank you and goodbye.